and it is hot. I hope this, um, if somebody's there, could you let me know if the microphone's working? I'm just using the microphone on the phone and we will see how that goes. And I think the carving, um, oh, a bit dusty. Um, this eye here today, and we'll see how that goes. And a few other things. Um, yeah, so how is everybody? It's really warm here. It's going to be 30 degrees here. That's Celsius. Um, and I think, what's that in Fahrenheit? Around about 85 or something like that. In the 80s anyway. So, oh, g'day, Amy Jo. How you going? Um, yeah, so going live again. I'm trying the vertical format today. And I'm just going to see how that goes. Um, and I'll show you outside, actually. Um just for something to do while people are getting set up and joining. Um, when I get these kind of like lives a little bit more fluid, I will probably um, advertise them a little bit more. So I'll just turn the camera around. So you can sort of see it's really sunny outside. Um, it's our backyard there. So yeah. Blue skies, 30 degrees, it's a back garden. Everything is very dry. So, yeah. Right, okay, we're back to the carving table. So ready there. I made that ages ago, yeah. It's very cool. Right, okay. I keep on saying okay, I'm going to stop saying that. Right, I'm just putting the phone in the holder. Oh, it sounds cold there, Amy. Um, do you get snow where you are? We don't, we don't tend to get snow in winter here. Winter is like June here. Um, right, okay. It's getting set up here. So last week we kind of like was making this eye mound here. Blizzards here. <laughs> I think we all have our things that we say a lot, don't we? I say okay a lot. It's probably what we sort of went through our formative years as. Okay, so yeah, so last week I was doing this face here and um, I'd kind of finished this side and my idea was to try and learn, get myself to learn how to do female faces. And so I tend to sort of like try and um, just do one side so I get kind of used to doing the, the faces whereas if you do both sides it takes a long time to get used to doing that and I saw like these are kind of like throwaway carvings as far as I'm concerned just not because they're bad or anything like that but just because I want to be able to learn from them so um, and I think I'm going to sort of like just work on that eye today and maybe that cheek as well and I'll show you how I round that out well, now we had a problem last week. Hang on a second. I just got to do something because I'm getting some feedback. I'll be back in a second. Right, coming back. Okay. Got my safety shoes on today, it's bare feet. That's how hot it is. <laughs> right, okay, so back to this. So what I'm gonna try and do is, I'm gonna try and make it so it focuses on the carving today, which is actually quite hard to do because when you stick your hand in front of it, it focuses on that and then you can't quite see the carving if you see that sort of like goes blurry 
So we try and select, keep our hand um, level with the carving and then it will be a bit better. And you can also, you can't, when you're doing lives, you can't lock the focus, which is a bit of a pain. But um, we'll see how we go. Okay, so we've, when we're doing eyes, I still like, um, you're going to be doing them both at once when you're beginning. So let's see if I can, wait. Okay, so what I try and look at is sort of like reference points. If I'm trying to copy this eye, this eye to that eye. So um, with a female eye, it's kind of very similar to the male eye. There's no sort of like real differences. Well, there is. Um, you want to keep kind of things quite shallow so it doesn't sort of like have a big... Um, so sort of like cut out here and then the eye um, you want to keep sort of things smooth as well so to sort of like not have well this is my thing if you're doing an older female it might be a bit harder because then you've got to put bags in but if you can keep things smooth it kind of looks more feminine so what I do is I will sort of like work out that point there will be here and so like, or well maybe it was just a little bit lower. I'm trying to look around the camera. And then... I don't think my um, comments are working that well. Right, okay. So, yeah, we was up to. And so I'm just putting in sort of like reference points. So that top part there will be about there. No problems. Just trying to get this. If I go up a bit. Bear with me as I sort out the camera. So. We just sort of like try and work out by drawing in how those eyes are going to be. You see that? See that? That's kind of like the bottom of the eye there. And that's probably around about there. So that's a little bit big there. And also the pupil. Um, when people talk about reference points and sort of like parts where your eyes sort of like, um, that should be like, that part there should be sort of like the width of that part there. And then there should be half an eye to sort of like the outside of the face there. But also the pupil sort of like is supposed to come down and sort of get the side of the mouth. It's probably a little bit out, but that doesn't look too bad. Okay, so we're kind of looking pretty good here. You just got to bring the eye up there. We'll put the pupil around about there. See, and how I've sort of like, you want to keep the pupil in females. Yeah, eyes are difficult. <laughs> um, you want to keep the pupils on a female quite wide. Um, not so like Clint Eastwood, you know, that kind of, you want to have the whites pretty big. So I'm just sort of like drawing it in, just sort of like, I kind of think that looks pretty good. Kind of looks about the same. Now we've got a lot to work on down here as well. Um, but we'll concentrate on the eye at the start. So I tend to like, when I do the eye, I'll tend to sort of like start off with that upper eyelid and try and get that pretty much in. Grill and Rich. Howdy, Amy Jo. Starting to cool off here in Texas. I think Texas is quite hot all the time, isn't it? I can't carve outside until the weather gets better. I could only hope the symmetry that I'm looking <laughs> for. Um, yeah, Matt does a great job. That's me. Ah. <laughs> um, yeah, I don't know. I think 
I, I put it down to patience more than anything. You know, you've got to be patient when it comes to carving and going slow and just methodical and just be sort of like, I don't know, just be, if you don't get it right, just try again, man, and just keep on trying. And and understanding where you've gone wrong, that's the key point kind of things where you learn. Whereas if you want to, I always find like if I carve really fast, then I sort of start making more mistakes. But if I slow down and I will just sort of look going, I just want to create that shape there on this side. I'm not worried about the whole eye at the moment. I'm just thinking about this eyelid. Right, so we need some sort of like burrs to sort of get that going. And I quite like these sort of like um, inverted cone burrs because they're kind of like, um, they don't go too sharply into that top eyelid. So, so like if I'd use the T-shaped burr, it's going to like leave a real big crease in there, but these tend to be sort of me leaving a sort of mediocre crease. So we'll do that first, and I tend to use that to go under that eyelid as well, and then I might sort of look at, then I sort of like reassess, I guess that's what I'm saying. Yeah, it's a problem when you're carving wood, it's taking off too much because it's <laughs> taking off too much. Is pretty hard. So um, I haven't actually carved that many female faces, but I have, um, I do, like as a job, I make, um, I work for a foundry and a lot of my work is involved in um, recreating, um, I guess, parts of other artists' work in wax. And like their, their work will be cast in wax and it will have mistakes in it. And then I'll fix it up and then I'll get cast in bronze. Um, so I do that as a job. Um, sometimes it's interesting, sometimes it's quite boring. Um, but I did make a female face. I'll see if I can find it in a second. second. I made it out of clay. Okay, so this is the female face I made out of clay, so... Ooh. So this clay here, see that's, that's this kind of size of it. So, um, and with clay you can sort of like keep on moulding it around. So this, this clay is called, uh, what is it called, oil-based clay. It's, um, it's never going to dry out, so it's really good for sort of like just working out structures and all of that kind of stuff and lips. So um, you can add and take away. So whereas in your, whereas in your sort of um, woodworking, it's uh, if you take away too much, it's kind of gone. Uh, well, her thing fell off there. So essentially I did this on a course and I quite liked it. And it sort of like taught me a lot about the female face. And sort of like that roundness on the forehead, that sort of part there as we go down. It's not sort of like really sort of like, it's sort of real gradual as it goes down. And the nose is, like female nose is all different, but like the classical kind of female nose is that kind of ski jump kind of nose. And the, the front of the nose is kind of pointed up a little bit like that. Um, yeah, so those kind of things. I find like <laughs> it'd be really hard to carve ears in wood, so I've never really attempted to. So um, the idea is with ears in wood, you want to cover it with long hair. So um, that's what I kind of tend to do. So, but you can sort of see the eyes on this. It's sort of like they're both different, but they're quite wide, like. There's a lot of pupil there compared to a male's eyes, and they're quite shallow in the um, eye socket as well, whereas a male's eyes will be set back a little bit further. So we'll get back to the wood carving. I'll just put that aside. So this is, um, 
I'm just saying that that is oil based clay, it never goes off. You can cast from it, but you can't like, you can't really do anything with that. You can't sort of like fire it or anything to make it go hard. But you can make a cast, a silicon cast, and then do it in bronze or wax or whatever you want to do. Plaster of Paris. So, oh, hang on a second. Keep on wanting to um, turn the camera around. Okay. And I'll just ask, is, is this, um, is this sounding all right and all because I'm just using the microphone, but what I'm going to do is I will be muting the microphone once I start carving because, uh, it's really loud through this, um, phone mic. So I'll just get geared up now and we'll start carving. Putting your old face mask on. Yeah, Rich, it's um, yeah, having a, a like a place to carve is really good. We've got like um a sleep out at the back of our house that I sort of like converted into a workshop. I used to actually get um do everything in the garage, but I had to like move the cars each time, and it was a bit that was a bit of a pain. Okay, so I'm going to mute the mic and I'm going to start carving and um, we'll get back to talking once I've sort of like gone through the carving a little bit.
Okay, hang on a second. Let's take this. Carving such pain, you've got to wear all the dust masks and everything like that. But, um, so that was pretty quick, actually. Sometimes I mess around quite a bit and try and get that right. And so we've got sort of like that top eyelid put in now. Now, it might change a little bit, but the idea is with the bottom eyelid, where's my pencil? As you can sort of see on this one, it sort of like comes around like this. That top eyelid goes further on. And this one sort of like comes down like this. So try and sort of like, try and get that. Right there, so you can see both sides. It's sort of like going along. Like that. Actually, what I might do is because that, you see how this eye is actually going sort of more of a sphere shape. I might play around with this shape here because it's a little bit sort of like flat through there and also it's sort of like sticking out like this so I kind of want it to be sort of a little bit more of a sphere so I will mess around with that for a little bit and then I will put in that lower eyelid as we go now um, choosing burrs to make this sort of like uh, more of a sphere is more about sort of trying to find a one that's sort of the, the right size for for this carving as well so sometimes you might use a um, cut sort of taper burr which you could almost do with this and then you might use sort of more of a diamond burr just to sort of like even it out a little bit so I will just try a few things and that's how I sort of like go. I don't have like a formula saying I use this burr for this, this and this. It's more I'll use this burr and see how it goes and then I'll go mm, it's not working out very well and I'll try the other burr. So that's kind of like what I do. Right, here we go. I'll just move that around a bit. Sorry for the camera movement. I'm just trying to get this sort of like best angle for you. I'll just uh, change the cuts all over to this one. And it's always harder, tell me what you find, but it's, it's always harder to do the left hand eye than the right hand eye. That's what I find.
Okay, so <laughs> I just started talking and I forgot I had the mic muted. So um, all I was saying is um, we're sort of like trying to get that sphere happening in the pupil of the eye. And you could sort of see me going with this burr and then that burr. And um, sorry, I'm just reading the comments. I, I eat my plate and I don't feel so good. Well, yeah, <laughs> it's no good. Okay, so not quite sure what to say about that one. Right, okay. So we've got those that pupil sort of going across like that. And... Um, I was saying before, also, like Amy Jo said, it's easier for her to carve the right eye, I think, but my hard one is to carve the left eye. It's going to be different for every person. What I do find, like, if I, because I'm right-handed, the nose tends to get in the way of the left eye when I'm carving it, and that will hit on there. So what you can do is you can extend your... Um, burrs out of your Dremel quite a long way. Um, I'd probably go in, probably, that would be the max I would sort of like go. This is quite a high quality burr, so it's going to be a straighter than normal burr. The cheaper burrs tend to have a little bit of a wobble on them. So you could go almost that far. And you can do that because, because you're not putting a lot of pressure on it, right? So if you're... Um, carving deep and deep parts and really going hard at a carving you don't want to do this because you're putting a lot of pressure and that can bend that as well or it can just put pressure on that shaft so that's why you want to sort of like keep your booze in quite a long way like this one if you're um, doing sort of like more using more pressure on your carvings so anyway back to the eye It's crazy someone noticed my comment. No, oh, no, it's all comments, you know. Um, it's all good. Um, right, so, and I'm a Southpaw when it comes to power carving. <laughs> yeah. It's probably yeah, quite handy in a lot of ways. Although, I don't know. It's hard to say. I, I think we all adapt in different ways to what we do. Okay, so what we're going to do next is probably just tidy it up a little bit around here. I tend to use and then tidy this here up. And I tend to carve the pupil in last. Right, so I'm going to mute it again and then I will uh, be carving that eye. So I might go in um, a little bit of this just to get rid of that bit there. I kind of want that. I'll just try and show you before I start doing it. So, um, so the eyelid goes along there and there. All right, okay. So let's get on to carving.
Okay, ready hey. You can sort of see me, I was going in with this pair here and I was just really defining those kind of lines and I was using the top of the bear right there to sort of flatten out the eye and sort of like try and get a little bit more curvature on there just so it sort of like sits a little bit um, within the eyelids I guess you would say. Just reduce it. Uh, thanks, Amy Jo. I've been a bit tired this week. It's been a super busy week for me. On um because it's fire season here, I'm a volunteer firefighter. Um I went out on Monday uh, for 10 hours on a fire ground. It was quite a big fire. And I, I can't post um, pictures on the fire or anything because that's against um, the law and all of that kind of say, but I can say that I went out on the fire. And um, it was a big fire, lots of um, yeah, lots of dangers and all that kind of stuff, I guess you would say. Um, but it was good. Um, and then uh, two days later, another fire broke out and I got called in to do a sort of like a 12 hour shift monitoring the fire and holding the perimeter of the fire sort of like around around where it was burning so sort of like we'd just go around the perimeter it was about six hectares around about that and we'd drive around every hour and put out hot spots and it, it sort of like it started going underground that fire and so um that was quite a long night and so yesterday i spent recovering and um so yeah <laughs> it's, um, it was pretty hard going um jamie is a volunteer firefighter he has been busy on wrecks during the blizzard yeah there's all different things in firefighting you've got to do all different kind of aspects um oh thank you very much uh, total respect to you guys and go over and beyond yeah i, I find it kind of find it i guess it is community service but you know i quite like that like helping out we've got a lot of a little nice community that we live in and we're surrounded by um trees and a very dry area so it's kind of like part of just helping out the community really and um i don't really want to sit around the community board table and discuss um signage and all of that kind of stuff so i'd rather go out and do something a little bit more exciting yeah oh hey mark the maker cool if you could hit that like button that would be awesome as well people really helps the channel out so that eye is looking pretty good you know when you do the eyes they're never gonna, never gonna look perfect what i will say is if you do if you do what i do um sometimes you'll try and get this eye to look exactly like this eye and it's never going to happen but what you can do is alter this eye a little bit to make it look like this eye just because this eye is finished doesn't mean you can't alter it a little bit to make it look like that eye there. So, um, yeah. Okay, so to put the pupil in, there's all different ways of doing it. Sometimes I've done this. I've sort of gone in with one of these inverted cone burrs and just gone bang in like that. That's a bit hit and miss. Um... But what I like to use is a little Dremel engraving burr, and that's it there. It's a really nice little one. All of um, the bits that I use is in the uh, description to this video. They are affiliate links. Um, most of them are the Amazon and Cutsel, really. That's the only two. I do have like the Master Carver. Well, that's not an affiliate link, actually. I just really like their burrs. So I buy these four from Master Carver. Um, there's another one. Where is it gone? I'm still, still a bit tired. <laughs> um, can't remember what it was. Anyway, there's four of them. And those are the four that I use. And they work out really well. Man, I wish I knew what that fourth one was. 
my brain. Oh, there it is. It's that one there, which is quite nice. That's probably this is probably the one that I use the least. That's the one I use the most. And you could see me, I was using this one before. Really good for details. So I got 150 grit on there, so you can sort of take a little bit away from that. The shanks are really, really nice. Um, I think they retail around about $11 in the USA for um, the four of them. And that might be a little bit much for people, but um, I guess, you know, when you're buying quality, it, they do last a little bit longer as well, so you've got to factor that in. And these Dremel Burrs, they are more expensive, but I really like this one. Um, just because it is small, it's less than two millimeters in diameter, that part. So we're going to put the pupil in. What I, what I do is I'll just explain it first and then I'll do it. Ah, oh, see ya, Amy James. Thanks for tuning in and commenting. Uh, so, I tend to go around and I'll make this part of the eye first, and then I will go in and put in that pupil second. So, let's do that. And I'll see that what I tend to do is I tend to start off and I will just start off with a small circle and then make it bigger. What you can do also is um, which is quite good, is mark with a little pencil where you're going to go. So look at the other eye and how that kind of sits. Something like that. And then the pupil in there. Right, let's do that.
<laughs> okay. All right. Let's have a look at the comments. Uh, so Amy Joe's um, going off to make some snacks for the kids. And um, Mark the Maker, my favorite bits are the ruby bits. Near finish is very smooth. Yeah, I haven't managed to get hold of those ruby bits. I, I think I heard um, just have Rob talk about them once. And um, whereabouts do you get them from, Mark? Um, and Rich has never heard about them as well. <laughs> are they overly expensive? Probably. <laughs> oh, g'day, Evelyn from Orlando. Oh, thank you very much. Yeah, sort of say, so I've just sort of like um, did this left eye and showed people how to do that today. So it's um, come along pretty well, I think. Like it would, you'd probably spend a bit of time matching them up a little bit more. You can sort of see this eyelid here is a little bit more um, pronounced than this one. But these are also like minor details that you sort of put in later on. So what I would do next is I'd probably start smoothing out this and then I'd work on this side of the lip here and just make it the same as this side and all these kind of things. I'm not sort of like showing you how to do the whole face today. I'm just showing you how to do the eye. Um, oh yeah, so Ruby Bits. Uh, not expensive, they cost a little more than diamond bits and around 10 to $17 a piece. Oh yeah, that sounds good. And so where do you buy them from, Mark? All right. I think we're just about coming up to the end. I don't like to go over an hour with the lives, but I probably won't be able to do a just a normal video this week just because I've run out of time because um like I was explaining before I got called out to a couple of fires big fires this week so um it's going to be just this live and then I will do another carving next week I'm not quite sure what to do if you've got any suggestions um leave them in the comments um oh yeah Oh, a lot of the old bird carvers use them. Yeah. Yeah, they do. Those bird carvers, they're, they're amazing. But it, I don't know, something about it, it doesn't really appeal to me about getting that sort of detailed doing birds and then painting them. I really like, I like the fact that it's wood and I like leaving things um, natural. But, you know, each to their own. It's all good. It's amazing skill they have, man, it's incredible. Right, okay, so thank you everybody for tuning in and we will see you next time and uh, yeah, take it easy out there. Bye. <laughs>